Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode and I've got a fantastic guest for you today, John, and he's coming to us from Washington and he specializes is in proving written content for businesses and we're, today we're talking all about revitalization strategies, uh, how to re reuse, recycle, uh, refurbish your content, SEO, uh, building brand authority through content and his advice for aspiring content creators. So I'm happy to welcome John to the show. Welcome, John. Hey, welcome. Thanks for having me, Chris. Really excited to be here. I know, uh, um, like, talk about your journey and, um, you know, you're the creator and owner of Cedar Press Proofreading and, and you help to attract more people to websites, convert them. Talk about your journey and your story. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, my journey. <laughs> So I actually spent 15 years uh, in the corporate world. And um, then in COVID, like so many people, I, I lost my job. Uh, I worked at a small company and they just couldn't afford to pay me anymore. Um, so as hard as that was, though, it really allowed me to sit back and go, <clears throat> OK, what do I really want to do? Like, what, what am I passionate about? And so the answer, um, as crazy as it sounds, <clears throat> is I'm passionate about the English language, like of all things. <laughs> And so I said, well, I think I can use that passion um, to help people, you know, improve their written content, uh, get more website visitors, get more engagement, get more sales. I think I can do this. So that's I started that journey about three years ago, and uh, it's been pretty wild ride since then. But I've seen some success and I'm excited to see some more. Which is really interesting because, uh, you know, I love, um, you know, whether, um, you know, def definitely um, this you know, 2020 kind of made people awaken and realize whether whether it was intentional or external or by design. Um, and looks like you're you've got a thriving business and um, you know, since 2020. So diving into the conversation, I have uh so one thing as one thing that's always been interesting is they have this um term called the three R's of content. It's a uh, reduce or reuse, recycle, refurbish. Talk about this for the audience and um, like uh, how they can use it in their um, their uh, content marketing business. Yeah, that's a great question. I think first of all, you want to make sure you have a good uh, base to work from. So like what I do uh, for my clients is we help them with their blogs or maybe their book, uh, whatever, or maybe marketing emails, whatever they have. Yeah. And so I think if you don't have a good foundation, nothing else is going to work. Yeah. Um, so a lot of what we do is to say, OK, let's, you know, let's take a look at your blog. Uh, you know, there's like the, the very bottom, right? Do you have any grammar and spelling mistakes? Like you don't want to send that out to people. So, <laughs> yeah. But it goes on like, OK, well, let's talk about, you know, does your, does your formatting look good? Do you have good links that go to live, active, up to date resources for people? Have you thought about keywords and evergreen content? So there's all of these like foundational pieces that maybe you don't think about because you just want to write an article or an email or blog to get your product out there. But there's this whole other host of things that if you can nail that down, OK, wow. now I can use this blog on my LinkedIn, on my Facebook. I can take bits and pieces. I could even turn it into a video on YouTube if I wanted. Um, so I think, you know, for my where, where we would step in is to say, OK, let's help you get that foundation just solid so then you can reuse that in in, in all of these different ways uh-huh yeah and um what's the well like for example in terms of the algorithms if you uh, reduce reuse or refurbish your content um does uh, do the um platforms do they down regulate those how do they how do you keep it like because you know if you have like a really good post and you can you create you know things from that um how how do you ensure that you know the that post keeps getting um you know visited and 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 looked at and all of that yeah i think the trick with that is to really focus on your content calendar um and you don't want to spam people no one likes that but yeah. at the same time if you can pull out you know five or six different posts out of say a blog piece and you can schedule it uh, like you know when i post a new blog i usually say okay i'm going to post the first day when it publishes and then I'm going to post maybe day three and day five and then after that it's going to go into more of a rotation so I think as long as you are considerate about like how often am I posting things and am I posting things that are valuable to readers then I think that's really the most important thing is yeah I'm, it's not about just selling necessarily but it's about what kind of value can I give to my readers how can I make this 
uh, impactful for them? Like what's in it for them? What's their takeaway? Like if you can focus on those things, then I think, you know, regardless of what the algorithm might say, you'll be okay. Yeah. The other question is, um, because I uh, people said that SEO is dead, but uh, actually with AI now, um, I, I've actually kind of taken more interest in SEO and content optimization. So it's a crucial element aimed at driving traffic. And what are common mistakes you see in blogs and how do you correct them? Oh, that's a great question. So there's, there's a number. Um, again, like the, the very most foundational piece is, is it just well-written content? So this is where AI isn't there yet. And if you've ever, you know, messed with AI, you know, this, uh -huh. it, it sounds like AI. It doesn't sound like a human being and people, I don't think people want to read that. So is it engaging? I mean, you can start from the top. Um, uh -huh. do you have an effective hook? Does what does the first paragraph grab a reader's attention? And if it doesn't, then you're you're lost, right? You're sunk. They're going to go on to something else, a cat video, whatever it might be. Yeah, so, yes. you know, you have to start from the top. So, uh, you know, do you have that that hook that really grabs the reader? Is the content good from a grammar and spelling point of view? But also, like, do you have white space? You know, that's something a lot of people don't think about. But who wants to read a, a paragraph that's that's this long, you know, on a on a computer screen? You have to break it up for people. Um, do you pull out the juicy bits as quotes or call outs for the people that like to skim and just get to the information? You know, evergreen content. Are you referring like, you know, if your blog post refers to Y2K, that's a clear signal that it's maybe a little dated and people aren't going to probably want to read that or take that as seriously. So yeah. those are a lot of the things that I see, you know, day to day. Yeah. And the other um, talking, you know, kind of moving uh, through is uh, building authority through content. And you've mentioned the importance of expertise, um, authority, trustworthiness. How do you ensure these elements are reflected in the content you create or edit for your clients? Yeah. So I think that refers a lot to, um, and again, I hate to keep hammering this, but this is my job. You know, the, I mean, the grammar and spelling is like the, you, you have to be this high to tall to ride the ride thing. Like that has to be there, but also, especially with authority and expertise is think about your voice and your tone of your article. What, who are you, what is the persona you're trying to proje project? So I, like, I work for some functional medicine doctors and they want to present like, you know, they're, they're knowledgeable, they're wise, uh, they have experience. So how do you talk and how do you write when that's the image you're trying to project? So there's certain words and there's certain phrases and there's certain ways of saying things that you really need to focus on. Um, so that's, again, one of the benefits that like a service like mine provides is we can ensure that you're going to have that tone and that voice moving forward. You're going to project that expertise that you have because we're here to help you do it. Yeah, I love that. Um, and do you, for advice for aspiring content creators, um, you know, for just someone starting out with content creation or a small business owner looking to write their own content, what are your top tips for creating impactful and engaging articles or blog posts? Uh, great question. I would say, if you think about it from a logical flow, start with a good hook. If you don't hook people, I mean, again, it, I think I, uh, yeah, I've read studies. So the average internet user is going to judge a website or a web page within milliseconds. <laughs> you have, a, you know, just a, a small amount of time to hook someone. So make a good hook, hook your readers in, tell them what you're going to tell them. Um, and then from there, make sure your flow is logical. Make sure it makes sense as you read through it. Call out the key points for those who like to skim. And then probably the most important thing, especially in a business context, is you're trying to get that reader to do something. So what are you trying to get them to do? It, may, it might be clicking a link. It might be reading another article. It might be signing up for a course. So you need to have a very strong call to action. They're called CTAs. Um, and that article needs to direct that person through the customer journey to that call to action. So if you can nail the intro, have that good logical flow, and have a strong call to action at the end, you're, you're going to have a good article. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, and the next question I have is um, impact of quality content on business growth. And can you describe how high quality, well-edited content has directly impacted the growth of your clients' businesses and um, kind of uh, stories that highlight these effects? Yeah, absolutely. Let me... Well, let me give you a story about someone who is actually not my client, and then I'll give you a story about someone who is my client. How about that? 
So this is me as a as a consumer, right? I was thinking about this the other day. So I'm really into guitars. That's what I do when I'm not working. Um, and my, one of my favorite YouTube channels, he's a guy named Phil McKnight, and he's just got a, a an encyclopedic understanding of, of guitar, everything guitars, he knows. But when I first started watching him, his his written content, so either the blurbs on the screen or the, uh, you know, the, uh, what do you want to call it? The lost my train, lost what's called, but you know, the, the description below the video, rife with errors. I mean, just terrible, terrible errors. And so in the back of my head, I'm going, how much does this guy really know about guitar? Because he can't even spell it, the words right. Uh, now, I had to overcome that hurdle as a consumer, and I eventually realized, oh, he just is bad at spelling, but he's a really knowledgeable person otherwise. But that put an obstacle in my way. It took me a while of going back to it and having to give him the benefit of the doubt and having to think, oh, man, you know, is he really know what he's talking about? Um, now he's much better. I think he's hired an editor now. So like, it doesn't look like that now. But at the time, that was that roadblock that didn't need to be there, but it was. Um, and so for like for my clients, that's what I strive to do, right? So whether it's the functional medicine doctors that I work with, or um, I work with a, a company who uh, helps people sell their online businesses. And, you know, at the end of the day, like your reputation rests on the words that you say and speak and write. And if you can make those words better, you know, your reputation will be better. Um, and that's just... That's just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, and kind of uh, what I really, what I'm really interested in is trends in uh, marketing and what trends are you currently seeing in content marketing? Because a lot of uh, it's, it's gone away from uh, words um, and now it's now like more short form, like ver ver vertical video. So what uh, trends are you seeing that business should be aware of and how do you adapt your writing strategies to keep up with these these trends? Great question. So I think I would say that the words are still very much alive uh, because people still use Google a, a tremendous amount. <laughs> so one thing that maybe you don't know about Google is Google favors content that is newer over content that is older. So like a super easy tip that you can do if you have some written content, like a blog or something, is just go back and update it over time. So write your blog and then set a reminder for, you know, I mean, it sounds crazy, but two years later and go back and update that because if all of your content is fresher than two years, Google will rank it higher. Yeah, um, that's something that maybe a lot of people don't know. Uh, but also, you know, something I've taken to do in my own work is if you can intersperse videos throughout like a blog post that will drive readership and viewership. And again, like like we mentioned before, if you have some written content, you can definitely take it and you can make video content with it whether it's you speaking into your iphone or whether it's you using like a, a, a faceless youtube channel there's all kinds of opportunities to take your content reuse it reformat it uh into that kind of short form but i do think the written word is here i don't think it's going anywhere uh -huh. um you can still definitely make use of it yeah yeah it's just how it's how you use it and how you mix and match with the current uh consumption and media trends um yeah, I mean, we all, we all we all have to, you know, read and write, which brings me to my next question is, uh, you know, no conversation in these days is would be a miss without discussing chat GPT and AI and, and generative AI. And so how do you see this, uh, these uh, trends and technology um, playing out in terms of, you know, the blogosphere, SEO, uh, data analytics, social media, all of that? Unfortunately, my crystal ball is in the shop, so I don't know what AI is going to become. Yeah. But I'll tell you today, as a content editor and as a writer myself, I can tell you what I use those things for. Yeah. Um, I do not use them to copy and paste. That does not <laughs> work. <laughs> but uh, what it, one thing it's, it's really, I, I kind of think about it as like your junior assistant. So if you're struggling with how to phrase a sentence, uh -huh. Put it in chat GPT and it'll help you. Say, hey, rephrase this, make it better. And uh -huh. sometimes it'll get you there. Uh, if you're struggling with, you know, what kind of blog topics should I should I write about? Chat yeah. GPT is wonderful for brainstorming. That's what I, I use it for that all the time. Hey, give me 10 examples of things I could blog about. Here's my business model. Here's what I want to achieve. Here's my call to action. 
what are 10 things I could blog about? And it'll give 10 to you. And you can, you know, two of them will be amazing. Five of them will be okay. And the rest will. And then as far as, you know, specifically editing, you can use those tools to pop in a sentence or a paragraph and ask it to, you know, proofread or edit for you. And it will do okay. Oh. But it's just not, at the end of the day, there, you know, it's not a human being. It's not going to have the human touch. I don't know if that's a problem that AI can solve because of what it is. Yeah. So it's definitely helpful. I use it all the time. It is not a replacement for human being. And I I don't know that it ever will be. We'll see. But it's just not. <laughs> yeah. It's quite interesting. Um, uh, you know, this this dichotomy between quantity and quality and how you I know now with AI you can scale quantity. And I'm wondering with this generative AI if you can create better um content than human beings and then scale that. If you can scale that, then you basically have, you know, you can basically it's almost like uh like shorts or reels or like advertising, kind of these things that you know kind of spruce up your um the other, um, so I love this, uh, you know, kind of ending it out and you've transitioned from corporate career to running your own editing writing agency. What's the biggest lessons you've learned in making this shift? And, um, especially in this day and age, others looking to make a similar transition. Oh man, that's a great question. I'll tell you what, the biggest thing I have learned about is about fear and rejection. So I was in the corporate world, world for 15 years, the last five years, I did not like it. Um, no. And I would actually drive into work every single morning. I would pray to God, God, may I please quit today because I was a a afraid to quit because I have a family that I never provide for. <laughs> COVID kind of brought that opportunity to me. So um, I was able to, you know, to do that. Uh -huh. But, you know, when you start a new venture, especially as a as an entrepreneur, um, there's a lot of fear involved because now you're on the hook for everything. Uh -huh. And so learning how to navigate that uh leaning into things like cognitive behavioral therapy and just uh finding a support system and stepping out even when you're afraid and doing it anyway those are super important and the other probably the most important resource that i've read since i started this whole thing is a book called rejection proof by jia Zhang. Uh -huh. oh, wow. it's all about how to handle rejection when someone tells you no and how to not take it personally uh -huh. and how to you know how to use that to actually become better so that has been an extremely helpful book i recommend this book to people all the time uh -huh. one of the best books i've read so uh -huh. those yeah the really the mental side of things and the emotional side of things that's been the hardest part and the most that's where i've seen the most growth personally uh-huh yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm always in the um, the uh, market for good ideas and great books. So I'm gonna check that out. Um, and um, yeah, it's just like it's like your personal growth. It's like you know these days when something kind of tries to get me off track, I, you know, it's it's kind of like you learn to not depend on the reactions or the uh, the decisions of others. And it's like whatever happens, you you don't need them because you, you can create self sustain your own prosperity. Um, which is very powerful and you know you can i mean you could literally tell people off if you wanted to um but uh, but uh, yeah but uh, really i really love this how you transitioned and um really talked about these concepts and how can people contact you follow you reach out to you you know check out your editing writing i know a lot of physicians they're into writing so they need an editor or just you know kind of uh they need their blogs um how can they work with you yeah, you bet. There's a couple ways. You can send me an email. So my email address is John. That's J-O-N. There's no H in there. So John at cedarpressproofreading.com. Uh, for an even easier way to access me, you can just go to my website, cedarpressproofreading.com, and you can just book a call. You, there's a button right there. Click it. Book a call. We'll sit down just like you're sitting down with me, and we'll just go over what you need, and maybe we can help. And then finally, you can find me on LinkedIn. If you just search for my name or Cedar Press Proofreading, I will pop up. I really love this conversation. I love your passion. I love your drive. And, you know, continue the great work. And um, you, and I love how you're sharing the message with the podcast audiences. And um, be sure to give uh, Marks a um, resources, a and his socials, a like and follow. And with that, or sorry, John. And then with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.